So I've got a good one for you today. Um, it's going to be quick, relatively short. Obviously, the title kind of says it all. Um, if you haven't watched a, yeah, at least a few of the other videos, like uh, the last one I did, Assurance of Salvation, Never Sin Again, Understanding Your Bible, uh, if you haven't figured out yet that, you, that how, how to never sin again, if you haven't taken the time, then you're probably not going to understand this. But I'm going to go through it anyway because it's, it's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, it's the sin unto death. Um, this week has been insane for me. I mean insane, but amazing. It's probably been the most amazing week of my life. Oh, oh, oh yeah, I almost, left, I almost forgot about this coronavirus thing. This is just the tip of the iceberg, right? You see all the earthquakes, you see everything going on. You see the fire in Australia, you see riots everywhere, coronavirus, all this stuff going on, right? And everybody's like, oh, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Nope, it's only going to get worse. The coronavirus might clear up, maybe, maybe, but it's only going to get worse and there is no rapture. There's no rapture. If you're not one of the 144,000 sealed, right? Everybody's like, oh, if you just believe in Jesus, then you're sealed until the day of redemption. That same seal is the seal that the angel puts on 144,000. That means there's 144,000. And if you haven't figured out yet that <laughs> what Jesus did, then you're not saved. If you still sin, you're not saved. You're nowhere near it, right? So all these people freaking out, just wait. It's only going to get worse. And all the people that think that they believe, but yet they still sin, even just a little bit, right? All those people, just wait. <laughs> You're not getting raptured. Okay, so I'm going to go over this with you. Um, it's been an amazing week for me. It's probably been the best week of my life. Everybody's at the stores freaking out, and I'm just sitting back like, this is awesome. God is awesome. Just wait what's coming. I've put it on everybody's channel, man. I've gone on everybody's channel. Try warning you. I'm warning you. It's coming. Okay, it's here, right? And it's only going to get worse. It's going to be epic. So this is the study that we're going to do on the sin unto death. All right? This is what it is. This is this is what it is. First John chapter 5. We're going to actually do verse 16, 17, 18, and 19. We're going to break them all down. Okay, one by one. I'm going to show you what they cross with, how this works. All right, so you've got First John 5, 16. It says, If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. I do not say that he shall pray for it. There's something that I don't have to pray for you for. Yep. There is a sin unto death, and I'm going to show you right now what that sin unto death is. Okay? So we're going to cross 1 John 5.16 to Romans 6.16. Okay, King James only. It was a toss-up between this and why the King James only. There's two verses that nail that. It's done. But my, my children actually voted on this. They wanted me to do sin unto death. Um, so Romans 6.16. Remember, sin unto death. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants... Servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Let's go over this one more time. Know you not, I'm not saying you instead of ye, but it's ye. This is King James, King James only. So that people who don't understand King James will understand this. Know you not. That to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey. Whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. Now we see, I go over this in all my videos. Okay, 1 John 3, 6 says, Whosoever committeth sin, whosoever sinneth, hath not, not, whosoever sinned, 
Here, 1 John 3, 6. We're going to go there first. Don't forget, it's the servant's thing. 1 John 3, 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. So if you still sin, if you still say you sin, if you're still sinning, you've never seen him, never known him. And I'm going to show you right now. So 1 John 5, 16, or Romans 6, 16, I'm sorry, Romans 6, 16. Uh, you are servants of who to whoever you yield yourself servants to. Jesus tells you in John chapter 8, verse 34. Okay, Jesus tells you, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Okay, so Romans 6.16 says know ye not that to whom you yield yourself members to or servants to obey his servants you are to whom you obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness okay so you see here in these these contrasts these three verses four verses right let's use first john 5 16 first john 3 6 let's use romans 6 16 and john 8 34 let's use all those right Jesus says, if you sin, you're a servant of sin, okay? Romans 6.16 says that if you yield yourself as a member to sin, that's a sin unto death. If you continue in sin, to choose to continue in sin after having received the knowledge of the truth, ah, we're going to get there, okay? So this is the sin unto death. You choose sin unto death. Sin is unto death. Period. Period. There's no there's no other way around it. So unbelief is then sin unto death. And I'm going to show you. Okay? So you've got sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Let's go back to 1 John 5.16. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's, uh, let's go to Romans 5.19. Okay, so you yield yourself servants to sin. So that's who you obey because Jesus says if you sin, then you're a servant to sin. Jesus says it. So you don't have to just, you could disagree with me all you want. The Bible says it. Okay, and 1 John 3, 6 says if you've sinned, you, if you sin, you've never seen him, never known him. And I can vouch that that's the truth. <laughs> so Romans 5, 19, it says, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So by Adam's disobedience, many were made sinners. All were made sinners, okay? There's there's a verse that says all are under sin, right? Um, yeah. So, for by one man's disobedience, there's only one way to never sin again, and that's Jesus. And I go over that in all my videos. I'm telling you, y'all need to listen to me. You don't have to. I don't care. Y'all need to share these videos. You, you don't have to. I don't care. I know I'm saved. Do you? I know for a thousand percent. So, he says, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, by his obedience, okay, shall many be made righteous. Now, you got to see that righteous thing again, right? So over in Romans 6, 16, at the bottom it says, uh, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Whose obedience? His obedience, because it's by his obedience, in Romans 5, 19, it says, So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteousness. By his obedience, not our obedience, by his obedience, that we are made righteous, okay? Um, and I've got Romans 2, 9 on here. Doesn't even make sense. Romans 2, 9. No, it's not. What was I looking at? Okay, so either way here. So let's do Romans 3.26. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness. Okay, so we declare his righteousness by his obedience, according to Romans 5.19. So by his obedience, we claim his righteousness. It says, uh, 
to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So it's just believing what Jesus did because of his obedience and what he did, that you are completely free from the law and sin doesn't exist. If you choose not to believe in him and believe in what he did and trust in what he did, okay, if you still think you sin, if you still sin, if you still say you sin, you are committing the sin unto death. Now, I'm going to show you how you commit the sin unto death. Like, I don't know, there's a few people that I've talked to, and I'm, I, I don't want to, you know, out anybody on here, but there's a few people that I've talked to and tried to warn them and told them and showed them in the King James that this is what it says. If you sin, you've never seen him, never known him. And they flat believe, they flat refuse to believe. They flat refuse to believe it. They say they believe. Now, I got this, Romans, or Titus, Titus chapter 1, verse 16. I want you to understand this, that this is real. So they flat refuse to, to, to believe what the Bible says, and they, they think that they're saved, so they keep going on in their sin, right? Thinking that they can still sin and be saved, even if they only sin once a month, in their mind. It's with their mouth. I'll show you. So Titus 1.16 says, They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. So they profess that they know God, and in their works they deny Him. They call it sin. They deny Him being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate, right? So unto every good thing they do, now it's pointless for them. It doesn't matter because they refuse to believe and trust in what Jesus did, that sin is done. They choose their sin over Him, and these are people that say they believe. This is the sin unto death. This is what I'm getting to. So you've got Romans 6, 16. says, Know ye not that to whom ye you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Okay, and we've gone over uh, Romans 5, 19. Now, the obedience, you see that you're given grace for obedience to faith in Romans 1, 5. It says, By whom... We have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith. Obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. You have to be obedient to the faith. And a faith is trusting in what he did. If you still think you can be sin and be, sin and be saved, you are committing the sin unto death. Because you're choosing not to listen to what this is telling you, to what I am telling you. I've been warning everybody. I'm on everybody's channel. Everybody just ignores me. I've put in calls to uh, Kent Hovind. He won't eat, like he. I know he sees my comments. He comments on everybody around me. The guy on top of me. The guy on the bottom of me. Just completely just dodging me. Right, like the plague. Why? Because I'm gonna hold him to this if we ever talk. And it's multiple people. I went on Signs and Wonders. I, <laughs> me and Nick. I love Nick to death. And, you know, this is just what it is. If you sin, you're going to hell. That's the sin unto death. Any sin is a sin unto death. And we're going to go to Hebrews 10.26. Because once you receive the knowledge of the truth, like if I sit here and tell you that, hey, Jesus died, he killed sin, you're free from sin, Romans 6.7, right? He that is dead is free from sin, Romans 6.17, 6.18. Well, I can light them up. That's the truth. Hebrews 10.26. Here. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. That's the sin unto death. Sin is the sin unto death. And you guys aren't listening. So I want to move on. Okay, well, actually, I don't. Now, I want to explain to you how what I just explained to you. The Bible confirms. We're going to go to Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 19. I love doing this for you guys. Whoever pays attention. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 19. It says, Yet if thou warn the wicked. Who's the wicked? Sinners. Anybody who sins. They're wicked. They're wicked. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So by me warning you and telling you, I've delivered my soul. My soul's delivered. I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I preach the word of God faithfully. That's all I preach. That's it. And if you don't line up with this and it's coming out of your mouth, you better bet. You better. You won't even talk to me. I already know how this goes. You won't even talk to me. Most people are terrified to talk to me with my Bible. Because this means what it says. 
and it's effective in my hands. In my last two weeks, let me tell you something about fate. While the rest of the world is in a panic, I'm as calm as can be. And we have nothing. <laughs> and I've had the most amazing two weeks of my life, and it's not going to stop. Because I know what's coming. I'm faithful to his word. He's faithful to me. And I'm telling you, if you don't listen, this is it. The coronavirus isn't it. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Just wait. The stocks market have crashed. There's 8,000 earthquakes a year. Every The rivers are drying up. Pay attention. You guys think Israel is safe. It's a joke. <laughs> oh, man. Whew, that's another subject for another day. All right, so you got Ezekiel 3.19. He says, Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. That's the sin unto death. Sin is the sin unto death. So go ahead. Go ahead. Jesus says in Matthew 12, 48, 12, 37, Matthew 12, 37. I'm going to read it to you just to nail that one home. Matthew 12, 37 says, for by thy words, thou shalt be justified. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. By thy words, thou shalt be condemned. If you still sin, there's no cloak for your sin. John 15, 22. Go read it. It tells you what Jesus did. All right, so we're going to move on. Ezekiel 3, 19 explains to you that if I warn you and you stay in your wicked way, that you'll die in your iniquity. That's the sin unto death. Sin is the sin unto death. Okay, so uh, verse 17. 1 John chapter 5, verse 17. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. There is a sin not unto death. Absolutely. When you choose to believe, you no longer sin, you're not unto death. Right? You were a sinner, and now you're not. So all your, whatever you do, was not unto death. And watch how you can know that. So, it says all unrighteousness is sin. Well, let's look at what unrighteousness is. Okay, we've got mm, 2 Corinthians Go to 2 Corinthians. I didn't write this one down, but it's very key to this. Chapter 6. Uh, no. Chapter 7. Fourteen, right? Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unbelievers? unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness okay if you still sin you're not a believer you don't know the first thing about believing that's what my whole channel set up for is to help you okay but the reality of it is you see in this verse be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers the unbelievers are called unrighteousness okay so you got first john 5 17 it says all unrighteousness is sin so all unbelief is sin because you don't believe, right? You think you sin. You don't acknowledge him in all you do. You profess to know him, but you deny him in your works, calling them sin. So you're reprobate even unto your good works, Titus 1.16. And that's what this is. So now, let's go to Philippians 3.9. Because I want to show you what we're supposed to do. In, yeah, Philippians 3.9. Philippians 3.9 says, And be found in him... Not having mine own righteousness, which is uh, which is of the law, those Ten Commandments, is 603 other laws, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Faith in what He did, that by His obedience, by His stripes we are healed. Healed, okay? Healed, completely healed. Should not know right from wrong. Got to repent. Got to say sorry for never trusting him. So, uh, Philippians 3.9 is be found in him, not having my own righteousness. But you want his. You have his righteousness. Because if you just trust in him. Right? And that's what it is. So, we're going to go to, uh, that was all unrighteousness is sin. And there's a sin not unto death. There's a sin not unto death. When you choose to believe, then anything you do, it's not unto death. Verse 18, 1 John 5, 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. 
but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and the wicked one toucheth him not. Okay? So whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Where else do we see that? We see that in 1 John 3, 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. That's because the ones that are born of God that truly trust Jesus, that are like me, that are one of the 144,000 that are sitting here, that are preaching the word, that are sitting out in the streets, that I can't seem to find because there's only like 1 in 50, 55,000 people, and that's if they're all alive. I'm like, this is over 2,000 years, okay? So I'm sitting here preaching this to you, and it says, that whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. Why can he not sin? Because it's impossible to sin. It's not possible. Jesus did what he did. I trust that. I believe. I've been healed. I've been, I help people with this. This is what it's all about. So we see that 1 John 3, 9 says, whosoever, born of God, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. So you see that if you're not born of God, you do sin. 1 John 3, 8 says, whoever committeth sin is of the devil. So if you commit sin, then you're committing the sin unto death. If you choose to stay in sin after watching this. If you choose to not teach people, if you choose to not pay attention, if you choose to not listen, you're committing the sin unto death. It's unbelief. It just is what it is. All right. So uh, we got 393836. We went over those. Okay. So verse 19, 1 John 5 19. I love this one. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. I know that I'm of God. In my bones I know I'm saved. I know for a thousand percent I preach his word faithfully. I know for a thousand percent that there's nothing like it in the world. And you all don't want to listen. Some of you do. But the majority don't. And in person it's funny. I like watching people squirm. You show them First John 3, 6. They squirm. They don't know what to do. I've literally had family friends completely trash their entire relationship with me because they don't want to believe 1 John 3, 6, but yet they go to church every Sunday and claim to believe, and then they tell me I'm crazy. Well, 1 John 3, 6 is if you sin, you've never seen him and never known him. And if I show you how this works, and I did, my whole channel is all about it. If I show you how this works, and then you choose to still not believe me, you've committed the sin unto death. And that's the truth. That's the sin unto death. 1 John 5, 16. So, and that ties back to Romans 6, 16. Go ahead, read it. Read it for yourself. I teach you out of a King James. I would never teach you out of anything else. And that'll be my next video on why. But the reality of it is, things are about to get a lot worse. And all you people that say you believe and you think there's a rapture, <laughs> huh. there's a verse in, in Revelation that shows that the ones that are sealed are still here through, through it all. They're here through it all. Right? The ones that are sealed. The ones that die for it in the tribulation, that's a different story. You lose your head for it. That's coming too. Down the road. But I'm telling you, you need to listen. Shut up. <laughs> you think it's not possible? Read your Bible. Enjoy your night, and until next time.